Okay, we're going to go through the examples for fraction problems. Um, and I believe we've got three examples. So remember, we're all using n to represent a numerator. We're all representing d to, repre to be a denominator. And we're all going to represent n over d to equal the original fraction. So the first one we're going to do was off of that worksheet, um, the word problem examples, number 20. And it said the denominator... of a fraction is 5 more than the numerator. If one is subtracted from the numerator, the resulting fraction is one-third. Find the original fraction. Okay, so again, if we're all going to use the n and the d, then there's no need for you to um, define the variables. If you decide do you want to use different variables, then you will need to explain to me which one's the numerator and which one is the denominator. So the first sentence says the denominator of a fraction, so that would be d, is, that means equals, 5 more than, there's a switcher phrase, plus 5 at the end, the numerator, which is n. So already it looks like I'm going to be using substitution on this. If 1 is subtracted from the numerator, the resulting fraction is 1 -third. So when they say that, what they're saying is that that numerator is part of a fraction. So it's taking 1 away from the numerator of a fraction, so n minus 1 over d, is equals 1 third. Okay, so again, we know what d is, so we're going to use substitution over here. And we get n minus 1 over n plus 5 equals one-third. And then what we have is cross products going on. So we've got uh, n plus 5, that's what you get when you multiply n plus 5 times 1 equals, in the other direction, 3 times the quantity n minus 1. And then we just go ahead and solve. We're going to distribute, and we get 3n minus 3. We're going to subtract 3n from both sides to so get n's on the left. Oops, sorry. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides to get the constants on the right. We get negative 2n equals negative 8. Divide both sides by negative 2, and we get n equals positive 4. So the numerator of my fraction is going to be positive 4. Now plugging back into either original equation, we're going to figure out what the denominator is. So we get 4 plus 5 equals 9. So what we do is we take those two numbers and put them in the order of a fraction, numerator over denominator. And we can check our work. If I take 1 away from 4, that leaves me with 3. So I'm basically going to do this guy. So if I take 4 over 1, or 4 take away 1 over the denominator 9, does that equal 1 third? Well, you get 3 ninths equals 1 third, and 3 ninths can divide by 3 each, and we get 1 third equals 1 third. So that verifies that 4 ninths is the correct answer. All right, let's try another one. This is, this one is, says if 3 is subtracted from...
the numerator, oops, sorry, technical difficulties here, of a fraction. So anytime you hear that fraction, that means you have a numerator and a denominator together. The value of the resulting fraction is one half. And then if 13 is added to the denominator, of the original fraction. So now we're going to do something else to that original fraction. The value of the new fraction is one-third. Find the original fraction. Okay. So basically, if 3 is subtracted from the numerator of a fraction, so the only math that's taking place to that fraction is in the numerator, and subtracted from is the switcher phrase, so we're going to have n minus 3. So remember, Subtracted from is a switcher phrase. Okay. Now he's a fraction and says the value is one half. And then it says if 13 is added to the denominator of the original fraction, so that means numerator stays n, but we're going to add 13. And again, added 2 is a switcher phrase. the resulting fraction is one-third. So what we're going to do is cross products for both of these. So d times 1 is d equals 2 times the quantity n minus, minus 3. And so I again would recommend that you do this part just like this so that because I find that when kids try to distribute at the same time they forget about multiplying the negative 3 by 6. Now on the other one we're going to get d plus 13 times 1, which is d plus 13, equals n times 3, which is 3n. And then if you notice, we have a value for d. So we're going to use substitution. At least I'm going to use substitution. So I get 2 times the quantity n minus 3 equals, or sorry, forgot about the plus 13 plus 13 equals 3n. So distributing, I get 2n minus 6 plus 13 equals 3n. I'm going to subtract 3n from both sides. These combine up to give me a positive 7, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. I get negative n equals negative 7, divide by negative 1, and I get n equals positive 7. So that's part of my fraction. To figure out the other part, I probably am going to plug in the first equation where we had n minus 3 over d equals 1 half, and I'm going to get 7 minus 3 over d equals 1 half. Actually, let me change that. I'll do that one in red. So 7 minus 3 over d equals 1 half. So we do cross products, 
and we get d equals 4 times 2, or 8. So when I write my answer, numerator over denominator, I get 7 eighths. Now I'm going to test this out, because obviously I've just tested it in the n minus 3 over d equals 1 half. That's how I got that. If I subtract 3 from 7, I get 4. 4 over 8 equals 1 half. If I add 13 to 8, so let's do that in another color. If I add 13 to 8, does that equal 1 third? Well, 7 over 21 will reduce by 7 each to give me 1 third equals 1 third. So that just verifies that, yep, 7 eighths is the correct answer. All right, we got one more. This one says, a fraction has a value of 3 fourths. So here's the part that I always find funny. So kids think that the fraction equals 3 fourths. If that was the case, then we've had no problem to do, right? We'd be done. It's telling you it has a value, which means that your fraction that you're solving for is not 3 fourths, but if you simplify it, it will be 3 fourths. When 14 is added to the numerator, The resulting fraction has a value equal to the reciprocal of the original fraction. Find the original fraction. So again, in that second one, we're going to change the numerator of the original fraction by adding 14 to it. And this new fraction has a value equal to the reciprocal of the original fraction. And again, what kids want to do is to say that if the original fraction is n over d, then d over n would be it. But remember what they told us in the first sentence. The fraction has a value of 3 fourths. So we're going to use that in our second equation. So back to the top. A fraction, which would be represented by n over d, has a value of 3 fourths. So that's all we do. Our original fraction equals 3 fourths. Now, when I add 13 to the numerator, we're not changing the denominator at all, the value is equal to the reciprocal of the original fraction. Well, if the original fraction had a value of 3 fourths, its reciprocal would be 4 thirds. So that's how we're going to go about solving this one. So let's do cross products. And we get 4n equals 3d on the second one. I'm going to do the n's again. On the left, I get 3 times the quantity, n plus 13, equals 4d. So this doesn't look as nice as the last one, so let's go ahead and uh, simplify the um, second one by distributing 3n plus 39 equals 4d. So now I start thinking, how on earth am I going to solve this system? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get n's and d's together, so put them in standard form, uh, constants on the other side, and see what we can do. So for the top equation, I would subtract 3d from both sides, giving me 4n minus 3d equals 0. On the next equation, I'm going to subtract 4d from both sides, and 39 from both sides. So that's going to give me, again, keeping the order, 
n's in front, d's in the back. 3n minus 4d equals 39, negative 39, excuse me. So now we need to artificially create a match. And so um, it really doesn't matter. We can eliminate the n's or we can eliminate the d's. That we're going to end up multiplying both equations by values to get that to happen. So let's go ahead and let's eliminate the n's. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by the coefficient of n on the bottom. So I multiply everything by 3, giving me 12n minus 9d equals 0. Now for the other piece, I need to not only multiply by the coefficient of n from the top when I multiply on the bottom, but I also need to multiply by a negative. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 4. So that's going to give me negative 12n plus 16d equals positive. Let's see, 36, 12, and 3 is 15. So now I've created the perfect case scenario. So when I add, my n's eliminate. 16d take away 9d is 7d equals 156. Divide both sides by 7. And d and let's see, 7 goes into 15 twice, which is 14. Oh, let's see. I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Oh. Okay, so here's what happens when we make a boo-boo, which I just did. So let me go fix my boo-boo. Boo-boo 1, so I put the wrong number there. He's supposed to be 14. Boo-boo 2, that changes what I get here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and there. So, oops, one more. There. So now I put 14 here. When I distribute, I get 42. I'm going to subtract 42 from both sides. And when I multiply 42, negative 42 by uh, negative 4, I'm going to get a positive 168. So now we are back to where we were. See, you got to catch your mistakes. So again, 17 will go into 16 twice, which is uh, 14 with 2 left over, and 7 goes into 28 four times evenly. Whew! Got it, finally. See, that's what I need you guys here to help me catch my mistakes. So now I'm going to take that answer, and I'm going to plug him back into either original equation, and this is probably the easiest one. So I have n over 24 equals 3 over 4, and you do cross products, and you get 4n equals 72, divide by 4. 4 goes into 7 once with 3 left over, and into 32 18 times. So what I'm going to get is numerator over denominator, and here's how I'm going to check this out. Oops, let's find a different color. I've used pretty much all of them today. Um, so if I reduce this to lowest terms, let's see, they both have a 6 in common. That gives me 3 fourths, which is exactly what I was supposed to get. And then if I add 14 to 18 and keep it over 24, question is, does that equal 4 thirds? So let's see, I get 32 over 24. They both share an 8 in common, which gives me 4 thirds. So that double checks, and that says that's the right answer. All right, so even if you get an answer that doesn't make sense, stop, go back, reevaluate, see if you can catch where your boo-boo is, if, and then try to fix it like I just did. All right, good luck on your homework.